apparently just a few minutes early. So I'm going to kind of look at the work done thus far and kind of evaluate whether or what the work is going to be for today. Frankly, it's going pretty quickly right now because we're into this dialogue situation um, with Mel and Asher and just for fun to get myself warmed up this morning I took instead of reusing this drawing I decided you know what since he kind of changes angle here let's just go ahead and redraw him and so I, I just went through the process of kind of redrawing Mel this morning um, but I definitely have a few things I want to cover today and um, one of those things might have to do with uh, underscore and so as we get ramped up here to live stream this morning I guess one of the questions that's going to be put out to you guys is whether that's something that's at all interesting to you but I'll come back to that in a minute um, let me get rid of my hoodie I'm giving myself a couple minutes here since my stream officially is starting at 930 I just kind of let it start a minute early or two but uh, I'm gonna get rid of the hoodie because it's getting a little warm and then we will get into it and see what's going on today left off I think yeah we did this dialogue stuff with Mel where we're kind of bouncing between uh, Crete and Tahoma I believe for this shot I just stayed in Crete there really was no good reason to to jump ship now this let me look at this that I think is a bit of Tahoma um, yes I believe this might be the last shot I did last night. So I kind of dove in this morning and um, no actually I guess I did both of these dialogue lines for Asher. So then what I did this morning is I went ahead and redrew Mel. Um, he's probably slightly more on character. Hey Rose. Uh, with this drawing. So I drew this all in Krita, flattened it out and then just just cut and pasted it into Tahoma. Um, and so one thing I'm going to say right now, if you're, if you're maybe going to adopt this workflow, I'm seeing where it would definitely be more efficient all in all, uh, especially if you block in your animation in Krita. I would say generally it's, it's proving to be better to leave the, leave the lip sync for Tahoma. If you're going to go over to Tahoma, do the lip sync over there because it's, it's dead easy to do and all you're doing is introducing a bunch of extra keyframes here that then have to be rendered out as an image sequence having said that if you've got some poses that idea to click this little box called only unique frames and then what will happen is Krita will only render frames where something's actually changed in the final rendered imagery and then you might have to do a little retiming in Tahoma but it gives you a little better situation because this this level strip of images would have been like 60 images long not only does that mean you've got a lot of duplicate images in there that you sort of have to wade through but it also means that when you do save all in Tahoma it takes a long time to save your project because Tahoma is going to go through and save every single one of those individual images and chopping it down from about 60 to about 12 speeds up the save process a lot so it's, you kind of can have a situation where you're going to go get a you know get your morning coffee while you wait for Tahoma to save your project okay so this is the second shot I've done this morning so I've literally done two shots just in the last hour really I didn't even get started particularly early so as you can see once you get into these dialogue scenes using the plastic tool 
you're into some pretty rapid workflow. There's four seconds and there's five, so nine seconds in an hour is ridiculous. Um, so let's, for those who care, I'm going to put this up on the other screen so I can kind of look at what's going on. And then I think we're going to be coming back to Asher here in a minute. So he says... I'm not sure the king realizes that Golik is related to Tianara's mother. Um, so... This evening's marriage gives Golik a claim to the throne. Ew. Okay. So, everybody knows who Golik is. Knows he's a bad guy. Yada, yada, yada. Okay, so now we've got four concurrent viewers right now. So we're a little, a little lean on uh, a crowd, but the question I wanted to ask and throw out there this morning, which might be a very strange question for you guys that are into animation, but the question is this. Are you interested in looking at music? Um, constructing it? You know, kind of stylistically, what are some of the choices I'm making? And not only that, what software I use, which I've used for, gosh, I'm going to say probably 12 years. And some free plugins that you can download. And by the way, this software that I've used to score eight films, really, really stable, really, really capable. It's called Reaper. You can find it at reaper.fm. And it's only $60 to buy. So it's a cheap piece of software, but amazingly capable. So Rose says, yeah, she's into the music thing. Um, anybody else? Okay, okay. Uh, I will say this. Why don't we do this? Uh, since, since you're kind of enthused about that, it sounds like, with the big capital letters on the yes. Let's go ahead and divert to that for just a bit. And then we'll come back to the animation because the next thing that's going to happen is really going to be loading up this file into Tahoma and then just modifying some um, plastic tool skeleton keys in order to uh, do another line of dialogue. So he says, which I suppose is the entire point. This shot, let me see, this, this one might, we might be able to get a miracle here. Let's try. I'm going to hit control drag and pull this over here and put it in reverse. So you'd be surprised how often this works. Let's just find out. This is completely, I have no idea. Which I suppose is the entire point. Okay. Actually, I would roughly say yes. Probably this shot can be reused. Thusly. I would go, I would pull out a little bit of the beginning, and he would say, which I suppose is the entire point, boom, and then I would cut it here, and then I'll go find this final static image, and just drag a copy of this, of the image in here to stretch out the end of that shot, and I've just gotten that shot done, it was that quick, because reversing, <laughs> that, I mean, even his attitude and everything, that really works. So I'm just going to save that. Uh, let me go find that image right now so I can just be done with it. Um, so that's going to be in 393. Going to go over here to 393. And I just want that particular image. And I'm guessing, let me look here. Well, his mouth is open there, but, I mean, obviously we want his mouth closed, so let's just drag this in here, and and there we go. That shot is rock and roll, ready to be called a final, which I suppose is the entire point. Let me do that again. Which I suppose is the entire point. Okay. <laughs> okay, that was economical. So, stupidly enough, we've got actually almost 15 seconds of show done this morning in one hour okay so one US dollar third world country yeah okay all right so let's let's deal with it so what I've been doing is essentially I've, I'm listening to in my one ear I'm listening to Alan Menken 
if if there's any um if there's any Disney property from which I've either consciously or unconsciously pilfered some ideas for for this show, it would probably have to be Aladdin. There's others, but um and interestingly enough, uh my partner Valerie suggested to me that it'd be good to have the underscore for this film be oriented around kind of the Middle East. Well, what does that mean? I'm thinking sitars, but truthfully, um, actually, if you listen to the score of Aladdin, which I need to mute because if, if it comes through the live stream, um, I'll get a copyright strike. Okay. So let me, let me just show you the basic tools to get you started here if you're going to go down this road. Number one, this, this um, audio plugin, it's an instrument, okay? It's called Ederol Orchestral. Now, this is the weirdest thing. You can only get a cracked version of it, okay? But the, the, the consensus around the Internet for quite a few years now is that this is free to use because this is essentially abandonware. It was originally a roll-in product, and they quit supporting it or distributing it or selling it years ago. The crazy thing about Ederol Orchestral is it is a very, very good um, orchestral plugin, like stupidly good, and competes favorably with very costly orchestral plugins that, that you can buy, and I won't even get into what all the different ones are that are out there because there are a lot of them and, it, and it's a real competitive marketplace if you're actually doing hollywood scoring probably you want to look at some of those more expensive um like east west for example would be a, a popular one but anyway let's take this one thing at a time so reaper.fm you can download it rose right now and start to use it and it is not crippled in any way other than the fact that you get a little reminder pop-up to register, okay? And this is version 6.21. Now, full disclosure here, I'm using 3.78. So I am probably eight years behind on the version of this that I'm using. There are reasons that will not matter to you a bit why I've stuck with 3.78, but all the films I've scored, this is the version I've used. I've got it really dialed in for me, and so your mileage may vary. The The trade-off with Reaper is probably that, as I've said with animation software, it's a direct trade-off between power and flexibility versus simplicity. Reaper does not err on the side of simple. It errs on the side of powerful. And what you see is the same thing you see in Blender. Really long menus. Lots of options. Okay, And that's because everything you want to do, you can do in Reaper. For a program that you can download and use um, and, and, and create music and distribute it and everything for free, and it's $60 to... Um, to buy unless you want to buy the professional license. If you buy the professional license, it's going to cost you $225. Okay? What's the difference between the pro version and the regular version? Nothing. There's literally no difference. It's just a question of, of who you are and what you want to do. When I bought Reaper years ago, I paid the full price. I paid them 225 and the reason I did that was because I had a problem with a project and because Reaper saves its project files as a plain old text file I was able to load the project file up into an editor ferret out what was going on and fix it resave the text file and then reload it into Reaper and my problem was solved and I thought, man, that is so smart that I want to reward the developers, which is really pretty much one guy, a guy named Justin Frankel. He's the guy that created Winamp 
years and years ago, which was one of the really early MP3 players. And Justin Frankel has been working on Reaper now for about, I think, 15 years, I would say. So, okay. So, if you want to do what I'm doing, then you're going to run Reaper, and then you're going to install Edrol Orchestral, which, again, you can find a crack for it easily. And I, I, I tell you, I'm not... As far as I can tell, I've really searched, and and it appears to me that it truly is abandonware that anyone can use, and the company that originally created it doesn't really seem to mind that people are out there treating it essentially as freeware at this point. So now if it's freeware, you're going to say to yourself, how bad can it suck, right? How bad can it be? It must be pretty awful. Well, let's find out. Um... I'm going to turn on, uh, so I want to ask you guys, can you hear this okay? Can you hear that? Sound okay? Let me know in the chat. I know we've got a little delay here of about three seconds, so if, it, if it's... Um, okay, so now I can see on the screen from the delay that you're now hearing what I played a a few seconds ago and so just let me know in the chat if that volume is pretty good if it's too quiet then I might have to I don't think it is though because it looks to me like it okay it looks like it's okay all right so here's what we're gonna do I'm gonna take my um, I've got a I do have a keyboard okay I have quite a few <laughs> actually all right so that I'm not gonna sit here and click click on this I wish that this actually showed us interactively what what notes you're playing um but it doesn't so this doesn't really help me but if you don't have a keyboard you can you can do note entry like for example if i wanted to go i could just hit play and say okay and and it's gonna play back just fine get it so it's gonna know what you play so, I guess, again, question number one would be how bad could Edderall Orchestra, a free orchestral plugin, be? I think that's a fair question, so I'll, I'll kind of give you this example. I've set up some presets here, and let's go to the archive, say, and, and let's use drama dialogue. So, this, th what this does is it takes different instruments, and I'm not going to try to explain how, okay? There's basically plugins that are, that are uh, most of them come with Reaper that let you set up keyboard splits and um, let me see here this like this this little plug-in what it does is it limits an instrument to a certain range of the keyboard that type of thing and then and then they're they're sort of mixed and overlapped and so then what you get is something like this so let's just say So that's just one example of a of a of a bunch of layered stuff. So if I hit the R key to record, whoops, I want to record. The, I believe actually this that's going to be the driver track. Okay, so if I hit record and do what I just did, And then I just hit the space bar. Everything I just did is saved. So if, if you're good with a keyboard, which I am not. I'm a horrible keyboard player, actually. But as you can see, if you, set, if you take the time to set up a, a keyboard split and combo like this, again, with a free orchestra plug-in, it's all there. And, and as I say, I've, I've scored eight different movies um, and done a lot of other music, too, with with this particular orchestral plugin. So 
Um, maybe I'll do another example of a split like that. Something that's maybe a little more um, brassy. Um, let's see about this one. Energetic spiccato bottom under French spiccato on the top. So we'll see. Yeah, so this is like your little marching thing. That sounds quite similar to the last one, obviously. When I was listening to some of the stuff from Aladdin, it, it sounded like, um, and I love Alan Menken's music. I, I find his music, like, compared to, let's say, John Williams, okay? Alan Menken's underscore on the Disney films is really easy for me to, to grok. I can understand, like, texturally and musically what he's doing, which is kind of cool. Because it tends to be pretty sparse. So if you've got a, uh, you know, with his music, if it tends to be like a, like if you're at the beginning of the show, let's say, and you're just trying to tease the a dramatic beginning, you know, so you might hear a little... Oh, I see what's going on here. I've got pizzicato on the bottom, or spiccato, I should say. So that's why I'm playing in C minor, because it sort of fits the, the mood that I'm thinking I'm probably going to adopt for, the, for a lot of this show. Okay, so let's kill that. And then what I'm going to do is, this is my basic orchestra that I created this preset years ago. And it's been extremely utilitarian. It's basically just taking each of the instruments, um, each of the instruments from Ederol Orchestral, which you can go into the plugin and and tweak all kinds of things. Um, but you can have up to 16 instruments. So if you know anything about MIDI, you kind of know that already probably. I'll go ahead and crank the reverb up just a bit. And then these are just individual MIDI channels that are feeding the plugin. So the plugin's only playing here. And these are just MIDI drivers for each of the MIDI channels so that you can have an instrument on each um, channel. So let's see what, you know, just how bad does it sound after all. Well, here's a flute. I mean, I'm sorry, that sounds really good to me. Uh, I'll skip the piccolo because it's just a little bit, kind of a little bit bitier version of that. So now for this show, there's probably going to be some, if you think about Arabian Nights at the beginning of Aladdin, you sort of have this thing that's like, um, that's the kind of thing you're going to have. So it's not so much... For Middle Eastern music, we're probably not going to go so much for sitars, which would be more of your Hindu Indian type thing. You're going more for probably oboes and bassoons more. And then when you're ready to really push it on the bottom, for example, you might um, you might say you want to build things up a bit with a little French horn. That type of thing. And if you really want it to bite, grab some trombones and put them an octave down so you get this sort of... That type of thing. Um, so the French horns sound really good. And one of the cool things about it is that if you actually look at what the mod wheel does on this plugin, it's pretty amazing because they've actually baked multiple timbres for every different instrument into the mod wheel. And so with this one French horn sound, listen to this. So when they created this, they actually baked usually about four or five different timbres based on how the how the instrumentalist would play, you know. And so if I if I have a uh, 
uh, let's see here. I'll tell you what I'll do is I'll say, let's grab this trumpet and switch it to our French horns. And I, and by the way, listen to this. There's not a lot of that kind of stuff that's sort of pre-played effects, but there are a few, like this French horn swell, that you just might want to use once in a while. I tend not to use those too much, but so I'm looking for the straight French horn section. Okay, so this one, I'm going to crank the mod wheel up so I get that bite. So these are both uh, quite literally the same French horn, but just a little bit of a change on the, on the mod wheel. So if we go with that and then go down one track, and then what we'll do is I blew that because I actually forgot what I played. I guess I went back to C minor, so it'd be... You see, and you can ease in different timbres. What I've found is that the it's it's just like animation software. The the limit of what you can do is not has nothing to do with the software. Has nothing to do with the plugin. If you take the time and work with it, um, this free orchestra is literally covers everything I've ever needed. Actually, I've I've never had to go outside of it in over ten years. So I'll just give you a little sampler here again for uh, of what some of the different timbres are. If you if you want to keep things real simple, full strings are nice. And again, for that Alan Menken kind of thing, you're talking about something that's going to be really sparse, like a sad scene. See what I mean? That's one sound. That's that's literally just basically no more than four or five notes at a time. Okay, so that's the music. Uh, that's the uh, when you really need to push the bottom. Beautiful, beautiful contrabass. And the cellos aren't too bad. And just layer them together, and now you've got. Etc. 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 Et okay, and it'll record as many tracks at the same time as you want. Very nice. All right, that's that. And so, really, really quick, quick jab here through some of the sounds, and that'll be that. Violas are going to be a little more bitey, but if you use them correctly, they sound actually surprisingly like brass. So, if you really want, like, check this out. So really, it, you can do a lot with just strings if you're kind of into that. The harp, you know, for glissandos and whatnot. Percussion is what you would expect. Stuff like that. The timpani I use quite often. hard to get that roll but there's actually a patch that has the roll baked into it okay so there you go I'm gonna put the keyboard away now and just say that you know I, I threw that out there because I thought there might be some people who are interested in 
how how might you you know deal with underscore so uh, that's pretty much it again Reaper I highly recommend Ederol orchestral is my orchestra there it is this is on the producersplug.com they have a download of it they even say right here this is a cracked version since the original does not exist anymore so a false positive for a virus may come up, blah, 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 blah. And again, I've looked elsewhere to find out, geez, is it really, really okay for people to be downloading and using or Ederol Orchestra? And it appears that it is. It's pretty much treated as freeware at this point. Public domain, actually. It's about as free as it gets. So there you go. There's the music discussion. And it also gives a little bit of an indication of the direction I think we're going to be going on this show. Okay. So if anybody's got questions about that, feel free to pipe in. And I'm definitely looking forward to getting busy on underscoring this thing because, man, it's going to be fun. Okay. So now, since that shot only took us half a second to do, we can jump to this shot and deal with Mel we're basically wanting to get a breather and by the way it's the funny thing about the the music this is why i said the other day I, I could i could teach somebody a lot about composing because composing is very much like animation in the sense that you're if you think about playing a chord if you guys if you play a guitar or a piano okay so you say i play a chord well what am i really doing when i play a chord what i'm doing is i'm capturing a snapshot of a harmonic expression, okay? So, um, Max, that, that question actually, you don't realize it, but that question doesn't make sense. Reaper is the digital audio workstation software, DAW, okay? Reaper's the, the control center. It's like Tahoma or Blender. It's your master audio software for recording audio, recording MIDI, everything you want to do, you do from Reaper. Ederol Orchestral is simply a plug-in, like any synthesizer, that, that you then load into one track so that you can play sounds. It's just that Ederol Orchestral is a plug-in that has a bazillion sounds that are orchestral. I mean, I've probably got... In my Reaper folders with the application, there's a plugins folder that probably has um, hundreds of audio plugins, right? Orchestral is just one of them. I just happen to use it a lot. So you, if you want to do orchestral production, um, Ederol Orchestral is not a standalone program, okay? It's utterly useless unless you use it with some digital audio recording software and by the way it works with all of them you know it works with sonar or logic or whatever your um oh gosh what's the one that a lot of people use nowadays um ableton live you know it, it works with all of them it's just an audio plug-in for a, like you know like any synthesizer would be okay hope that clears that up um but yeah my point about it is that when when you think about animation being you know this is an attitude okay I've t kinda talked about this before but to me it's so important because it what it's what makes economical animation even possible is that by focusing on this snapshot is that attitude right or is that attitude not right okay if it's right then you can think of that as a chord it's like a chord in music now this attitude over here once he kind of shifts his weight a little bit well that's a little different attitude is it right? If it is, then the question becomes, how and when do we simply get from here to here? And all you're doing is connecting things up. For the viewer, the stuff that animators think is the most important, which is the move from here to here, is actually the least important, in my opinion. What's really important is those freeze frames, if you will. And then the motion is what makes it interesting. So it's the same thing in music. If I play a uh, if I play the one chord and then I play the four chord one bar later, the question is, how am I going to ornament the chord or even break it into an arpeggio or something just so that it's interesting? But the actual underlying structure is often very, very, very simple. And it's the moments that give your brain 
time to digest what you're hearing that make it work for the audience. That's why I think some some people say everything ended with Bach. I don't know if I agree with that, but I take their point because if you take all music and break it down to a very simple either chord pattern, chord chart, or even a, a dead simple melody, that's the important thing. Because then you're just doing like I always say, you're working from the known to the unknown to connect those snapshots together in an interesting way. And there's no right answer, right? That's why in Richard Williams' book, The Animator's Survival Kit, which is pretty much the definitive uh, book on animation, he talks about with walk cycles how the passing position is actually the important one in order to impart character or, you know, to really drive home the character. It's the passing position that matters a lot because the passing position is what the character does between the steps. You know, they land and then they step and they land. What do they do in between? And if that passing position, the character goes in all kinds of crazy directions, it's 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 like goofy walking and his feet actually break and turn backwards and all kinds of things like that um so it's not that the it's not that the poses and the animation are necessarily one more important than the other i think the poses are more important because without them it definitely won't work whereas if you had a bunch of motion but the poses were wrong nothing you do will make it work you see what i mean so for me, that means that the poses are the most important thing. But it's the two working together that makes things interesting. If this guy was moving, and this is the problem with a lot of amateurish animation, is your, your people that post little, you know, 10-second Blender videos or whatever of their first character animations, they always make the same mistake. And I've talked about this a little bit before, is that the thing's always moving. It'd be like me talking to you going like this all the time. You know, nobody in the real world does that, right? <laughs> you got to let the darn thing land at some point, and, and that's why you've got to commit to the drawing and be convinced that, hey, this drawing is good enough and it has the right characterization and it feels good. You know, it feels good to look at. Anyway, enough of that lecture. Okay, so let's go to 396. 396 is going to repurpose uh, 390. And this is going to be... I don't know if I did this in... I don't even know if I did this in Tahoma. I'm going to save all. This might take a minute because, like I said, Tahoma's not, like, the fastest ever at saving. So, anyway, uh, given that little lecture, if anybody has any questions about whatever, just put them in the chat and I'll, I'll get to it. So, right now, we have a six-second delay in our live stream. Just so you know. Just so you know. Fortunately, I can actually look at the live preview up there and, and see what you guys are are seeing. So what did I say? I said two, or, uh, 390. I don't know if this is a Tahoma scene or not. I literally don't remember what I did. So I'm just going to put in 390.tnz and see what happens. It seems to me this was a Krita. Yeah, this is a Krita. Okay, <clears throat> fine. Fine, 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 fine. Okay, his arms have lowered. So let me just see. Yeah, his arms are lowered here. So this is going to be a bit tricky. Let's give this a crack. Let's close this. Um, let's save that so it saves it as a Krita file too. And let's load up 390. So, yeah. Yeah, it's fun to... Where do I plan to release it? Everywhere. <laughs> um, I, I'm targeting this show to a uh, for a distributor that I've worked with with feature films that I've written and directed and produced. And we kind of agreed that this the concept for this show would be an appropriate concept for. Um, For them to distribute once once it's out there to be distributed i tend to be pretty happy with being hands-off on it so i can get back to the production side of things but um but they will they'll get it everywhere amazon prime to be pluto tv you name the platform it'll be there probably not netflix i mean netflix is a tough nut to crack but okay i hope that answers your question 
Where do I plan to release it? Now, it isn't conceivable, it isn't inconceivable that I was actually thinking about this this morning. Um, you know, if I, if I research the delivery requirements of various platforms, it may well turn out that um, to go ahead and uh, conform the final show to the exact requirements of, say, Amazon Prime or Tubi, whatever, and release it myself, isn't ridiculous we'll see um i kind of feel at this point like my distributor is doing a better job of getting getting my stuff out there and generating royalties then in other words the, here's the question here's the the real question is if i release something myself and then i sort of have the responsibility to promote that too okay i'm gonna make twice as much money because you're split in 50 50 with a distributor typically nowadays it's not always 50 50 but usually that's what you're talking about at the level i operate which of course is you know not hollywood level okay so then the question becomes if i don't go through a distributor can i generate more than twice as much um well actually can i generate more than half as much revenue as they can generate out there working for me and then there's always the possibility that you release it non-exclusively meaning the distributor has the ability um I, I actually had a deal like this with a distributor where i said okay you can go you can go release this wherever and whenever you sell it somewhere you you send me the contract so i get to see the contract okay um well okay so to speak to rose's comment i agree with you rose i actually for me at this point i would rather take the finished property turn it over to a distributor and keep working on the next episode because what i'm trying to do is build up this library and the other thing is that if 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 the property's out there say for a year or something and it's doing reasonably well you know you can you not like good friends with your distributor which i am but if you're not good friends with your distributor, so this is somebody that you're exploring working with, then it could be like this. They're going to say, oh, we're the best distributor on the planet. We'll get it out everywhere. You're going to make $80,000 the first year. They're going to tell you some story like that. And in exchange for that wonderful outcome, um, we want to have exclusive control of the property for five years. To which you say, um, you know what? You just said you're the greatest distributor in the world, right? I'll get back to your question in a minute, Chris. Okay, so, because actually what I'm explaining kind of speaks to that question anyway. So I'm talking to the distributor, and they've told me they can do the, th this amazing job. They're going to make all this money, and all they need in return is exclusive um, ability to handle the property for five years. To which you say, if you're that great at it, then let's do this instead. Why don't you take it for two years and prove to me that you can really do what you say you can do? And they say, well, no, we, we, we need a minimum of three years. And you say, okay, okay, then let's do it this way. I'll give you three years. But if you don't hit certain sales targets the first year, I have the option to pull it back away from you. I can take it back and say, all right, you're fired, basically. And indeed, that's exactly what happened with my last, my last film. So, uh, the let's see here. So, I'm just trying to give you guys real-world picture here of what goes on. Okay, so this film, boom. I'm not going to play the trailer because I'll get a. What happened last week was a, I got a copyright strike on my own movie, right? And I had to tell YouTube, um, no, actually, I own this thing, lock, stock, and barrel. So, anyway, this is the last movie I released on, uh, which you can find here on IMDb. But what happened was the international distributor we had a, basically that same agreement so i said he gave me he he's going to make he, i think he ballparked it around fifty thousand dollars well after a certain period of time he had only actually done about 
seven thousand dollars in sales or something like that it was like nowhere near what he said so i fired him i said okay you know you didn't do it i'm revoking your contract and i'm going to go in a different direction and if you're a creator you're going to be afraid to have that conversation because you're thinking oh my gosh you know this distributor they're they're offering you know they're interested in my show or my movie and boy, if I if I play hardball with these guys, I'll lose the deal. Um, no, no, you won't. You might wind up agreeing not to work together, but the reality is that you got to realize about distributors is distributors are usually failed producers. They're 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 people who got into distribution usually not always, but usually because they couldn't make it on the production side. Right? They're not good filmmakers, and they got into production because they want to be a sort of a close to the film industry or whatever right no distributors need content as do platforms you know and i keep using the example of tubi um so anyway to to answer chris chris's question directly um there's there's multiple ways that it can work if somebody goes and pitches a, a concept to um Let's say, let me, I'm, I'll tell you what, guys, I'm going to actually switch to the webcam view so I can actually speak directly to you. Okay, so if somebody goes and pitches a concept to Netflix, let's say, you want to create a show or you've got a show or a movie concept that you think Netflix might be interested in. Um, the, the first challenge you're going to have is getting the meeting with them in the first place because everybody under the sun wants to get a meeting with Netflix. So for simplicity, let's just forget Netflix, okay? Um, but when I think of um, putting a property out into the world, I'm thinking of essentially three things. I'm thinking of networks, like TV stations, um, second tier cable networks perhaps, you know, like a reality TV channel or something like that. So there's networks, there's platforms, which would be Tubi, Netflix, Amazon Prime, and then there's distributors. Okay, so there's three options. Where are you going to put your property? YouTube is a platform. I could release this on YouTube. At the pace I'm working right now, I could take this very show and it appears to me that I could reliably generate three minutes per week. So if I wanted to, I could take this property and release it in little three three minute bites, one a week or every two weeks on a, on a new, another YouTube. Probably not this YouTube channel. I'll probably start a new one just for that. But um, and then you know YouTube advertising and your viewership becomes your revenue base. Okay. For me, because I have experience working with distributors, I am creating this myself i'm not being paid to create it okay they're not putting up a budget for it and that's good if i don't need a budget then that means that i hold all the cards it's mine i can do whatever i want with it um and if it's good you're not going to have trouble finding distributors that will be interested in it you'll probably have a little harder time finding platforms that want that, that want to build on your concept like when somebody pitches Netflix they're looking for Netflix to give them a budget to create a, sh a show all right that's a little different from creating a show yourself and then trying to sell it to Netflix because Netflix has no risk in that situation right so that's kind of how Amazon Prime is anybody can put pretty much anything on Amazon Prime I mean one of my movies is on Amazon Prime the movie called Clerical Errors. It's sort of a, it's sort of a farcical um, comedy. And frankly, it doesn't earn very much on Amazon Prime. So my other film, which is handled by this distributor, is also on Amazon Prime, but that distributor is getting it out to all the platforms. Like every platform under the sun, they're just trying to put it out everywhere. Okay, what distributors uh, and platforms want, because it's a lossless, 
uh, it's kind of like a lossless master of your show that um, is a very high quality. And then they're going to compress it additionally when they stream it out, obviously. But usually you're going to create a ProRes master and you're going to deliver that to your distributor or your platform. And then they're going to do whatever they're going to do with it. Right. So that that's how that works. All right. Back to the normal screen. I hope that explain so uh, the only reason this is a pilot is because when I had the discussion with the distributor whom I have worked with for 10 years almost um, this was just what we decided to do and he said to me you know wouldn't it be cool if the first episode was a double length pilot and I like an idiot said oh okay you know all right and I, at this point, I'm thinking that's probably a stupid idea. I think what I'm going to do is split it into two pieces, and it's going to be a two-parter. This, by the way, needs to be stretched down to there, and let's save our work. Now, we're getting back here to Krita, now that I think about it. Okay, um, I hope that answers your question, guys. There's really no mystery to it. Um, I think that, to not belabor the point too much, but I think that when a... a producer is either young or inexperienced the problem that they have mainly is they're just not sure that there's an audience out there for their thing or maybe they maybe they just want to produce it and they don't really care I don't know but um, as I've said other times there's a lot of opportunity right now what's what's difficult today is making enough money to make a living and that's why for me I prefer to work through a distributor because I know that once I deliver the the master video to them within a month it's going to be everywhere and I didn't have to do all that right and and I could turn around and do I could do whatever I want in terms of promoting it too I could be all over Facebook and you know all the different Twitter and all the different platforms, Instagram, talking about my, my show or my movie. And I actually haven't done that. I could, and I could start today, and it would probably help sales to some degree, right? But, I, but at this point, I'm, I'd rather be focused on what I'm doing here, which is creating the property, let somebody else actually get it out there. So that's just an opinion, and it really just depends on what you want to do. And I could see doing different things in different ways. Like the Futurama um, fan episode, I think, would might be very appropriate as a YouTube release. You know, I don't know. I'll have to talk some more with Darren about that. Um, I mean, it's really my property. I wrote it. I did the voices. And Darren's just working on it. But I've kind of given him carte blanche to, like, you know, to whatever extent you're wanting to be involved with that rock and roll dude because I'm busy doing this thing right <laughs> okay so there's li a little problem um, I'm gonna actually take that key out and then what I need to do is look at the dialogue I'm, I'm blabbing too long here I need to get to work um, so Mel says this is a this is actually a quite an interesting thing I think see Mel's got a long line of dialogue he says I know when they ask if anyone objects, speak now or forever hold your peace, you could just speak up and, and then Asher jumps in and interrupts him. So the question is, do we want to split this between two shots? And I think we should. So I think he should say, I know, and start the line of dialogue, and then we cut to the close-up, because then Asher's going to interrupt him, and I think to cut back, Back to this wide shot for Mel's reaction when Asher shuts him up would be better storytelling than just staying on the wide shot. I know. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this and just push this all down the stream. Now, as you can... Uh, well, actually, let me see this. Okay, that's good. Asher's in his own layer, so I better save this right now. Right now. Sorry, wrong thing. I'm going to save this as 396. Okay, let's get that done so we're not overwriting our work. So we'll go boom, 396.ping, and because it has multiple layers, 
it will get saved also as a Krita file. So, okay, so now we're saved. Okay. Well, yeah, Chris, the... Um, The problem technically is not copyright. Um, my Futurama script is with, um, what's his name? Uh, is it David? David X. Cohen? The guy that kind of owns Futurama, obviously him and Matt Groening. Um, having a conversation with those guys would, would be prudent. Just to make sure they're okay because if somebody comes out on YouTube and does some Futurama thing that's a fan thing, and it's, you know, it's kind of cheese ball, but it's okay, they're not going to mind that. I, I could actually see where if something came out as a fan thing that was actually comparable to a real episode, that they might have a concern about that which I won't get into all the reasons why, but I could totally see where that might be a concern. And so I do, I do agree with what you're suggesting, which is that um, just making sure they're cool with it would, you know, probably be smart, definitely. Hey, I know. Okay, so he goes, I'm going to go here on the mouth. Is this just his mouth? No, that's Mel. Okay. I'm just going to keep rocking forward. I'm going to I'm just going to animate forward. No, I'd love it if Futurama um came back to life. I guess I need to sample this color so I have the exact color for the All right. So what we need to do here is give him an O and then a smile. I'm going to give him 3 frames. And then we're going to hit the E key. Well, actually, I guess what I really wanted to do was that. And then let's hit the B key and give him a smile. Sorry, wrong color. Let's go back here, sample that again. Boom, and... Okay, I want him to look really cheerful, like, hey, I've got a great idea. Hey, I know. Hey, I know. Boom. Okay. I know. Yeah, 20. All right, so now what we're going to do is actually drag this back. And nope, we can't do that. Okay, so yeah, all of these guys are going to be deleted. Boom. Because he just doesn't look cheerful enough while he's talking. So yeah, the, the, the likelihood is, um, yeah, the problem, Chris has got it. He's nailed it exactly. I think if somebody was making money from a fan Futurama thing only because of a YouTube audience, I don't think they'd care about that. But if you crowdfund it and now people are paying you to produce it and or obviously distributing it on all the platforms other than YouTube, very dangerous. <laughs> Got to get permission for that one. Got to get permission for that. Definitely. So... All right, so we're going to do the, the old two-shape. Okay, that didn't quite work, did it? And that's because of the stupid curve interpolation. <laughs> Sorry. All right, I'm making his mouth a little bit on the obnoxiously big side. Um, because he's it's such a wide shot. Actually, I need that color. So we'll see if this is too much. Let me just loop that and look at the actual. Are you winning, animator? Uh, Moonshwar. It is Moonshwar. I am glad to see that Moonshwar is here. I am using a voice now that may be somewhat like Moonshwar's voice. I do not know where Moonshwar is from. But I will speculate that sounds like an Indian or a Pakistani name for someone who is from the United States like myself. Um, so I don't know. I don't understand your question. And I may be saying your name wrong. Munishwar. Oh, my gosh. D-S-R-I. Or is that an N? D-S. 
DSNJKCNDS. You have no idea what that means. So what is what is your question, Munishwar, or however you say it? Are you a winning animator? I don't understand your question, but thank you for asking it. I will be happy to answer it <laughs> once I understand the question. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to cut to close-up partway through. And I hope, by the way, Munishwar, I hope you're not offended that I was doing an Indian voice. I do funny voices all the time around here. And it's part of being a doing cartoons is uh you know the the voices are definitely a very 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 important part understandable have a good day have a good day and dirt says la la <laughs> i just <laughs> okay i i think i think i just offended munishwar by doing the the voice um i don't know <laughs> Okay, I'm going to put all the dialogue stuff in here. And this is one freaking long line of dialogue. When they ask if anyone objects, speak now or forever hold your peace. When they, when they ask. No. When they ask if anyone objects. Hmm. Oh, good. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right. Thanks, man. I, I appreciate that. <laughs> thanks for being here, buddy. I, I'm uh, I'm just having fun, right? This is going to be Mel. <laughs> it's always nice to see new faces around here. I've been, you know, kind of picking up some more people lately that seem to be interested in what I'm doing. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we need to definitely increase the number of frames. <laughs> uh, I know. Jack, speak now for a whole new piece. I'm going to go ahead and continue this through to here and render that. So let's just add, we'll do it at 60 frames because I know I'm going to want to cut to the close up. And then we will, um, let's jump back to Tahoma and see as far as the close-up goes. Yeah, we'll kind of use this shot and give him a smile and adjust a few things and we'll be good to go. So, um, so let's render this and cut it into the show. This is 396 and control R. I need to put this up on the other screen where I can see what the heck I'm doing. This is going to be in the 396 folder. And we are, in fact, going to call it 396 dot and boom. Render, render, render. Cool beans. Insane as it is, I'm actually, I think I'm actually approaching my 30 seconds for the day. And I've only been working for, oh my gosh. I mean, maybe I worked for an not even an hour but so I'm about on two hours today and I'm already up to about 30 seconds of show that's insane that's insane why it's not even supposed to be possible hey babe the lovely and gracious Valerie is walking by in the background come on let's pop that baby in there Pop that baby in there like that, right there. I'll do a little different voice now. I'll do somebody from down in uh, Alabama, somewhere like that. Right on. Uh, hey, I know. When they ask if anyone objects, speak now or forever, hold your peace. Yep, and we'll just cut them off. Boom. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. A great deal. Okay, so what have we got here? Ten. Yeah, that shot's only a couple seconds. Ten, fifteen. Six seconds. Yeah, I mean, we're actually around 21 seconds for today so far. 
still pretty good. I mean, 10 seconds an hour is, if I can get 10, 10 seconds an hour, that's really good. Five seconds an hour is usually what I shoot for. So, um, all right, let's keep rocking here. Um, what we're going to do is essentially glue this to cutting to close. And then Asher needs to interrupt him. Okay, yes. So the close-up. is not yeah this is a little tricky let me think about this for a minute we're going to cut to close on mel as he finishes his line or is finishing his line and then asher interrupts him and i really wonder if we should cut back to wide for asher What does he actually say? He says, Mel, this is important. Okay. Yeah, because we could use this shot, do a little animation of him right here, and then kind of throw his fist up. So let's get the Mel shot done first. So this is going to be 396. I'm actually going to call this 396B. So I'm going to call this save scene as... 396-B. Okay. Save, save, save. Hello. And again, Tahoma's going to kind of take forever to... Oh, okay. Well, no, we don't need to overwrite it. Duh. Tried to save it twice, apparently. Okay, so I'm going to save all anyway, just to make sure everything is saved. And then, what we're going to do... Uh, let's wait for Tahoma to wake up and then meanwhile let's jump back here and consider okay 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 I am gonna leave this like this I am gonna let Mel end with his mouth open that's actually pretty cool hey I know when they ask if anybody objects speak now or forever hold your peace Mel this is important right so when he interrupts him we'll actually continue on this shot I'm gonna jump this back to 120 this is getting a little complicated but what I'm gonna do here is uh, let's save this we don't really have the Asher shot in there so this is 396 we're doing B so let's call this C so this is gonna be a mod I'm gonna make this a duplicate essentially but expand it so save as 396 C okay so we're getting a little creative with the storytelling here just because I think it's the right choice in this particular case so that's that now we can come back here and what we want to look at is Mel's acting um, and for whatever reason Tahoma is still being a little bit dumpy okay so here in this shot None of these, let's go to the level strip. I, I think none of these images actually work. So we're going to have to, I mean, that's the closest one. But we're going to leave him. Um, leave him on the plastic tool. So that might sound confusing. And I will allow him this little head turn. So I know this probably looks a little confusing, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to reverse these two keys, and I'm going to delete all these other keys. Okay, that that way we're sort of leveraging our content. Up here, I'm actually going to delete this level entirely because it's a TLV file that's being referenced in another Tahoma scene, and I don't want to confuse Tahoma. I want to be really careful about what I reuse here. All right, and what I mean by that is this because this level strip is referenced in another file. If I'm going to continue working with it, I want to go ahead and hit the D key and make a couple extra duplicate drawings down here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the S key, select all, and actually delete the drawings out. I'm just going to okay, that was not supposed to happen. S key, select all. Did it delete it? 
Oh, I see. It's selecting all on the level strip. Silly. Okay. So now we have two blank drawings, and what we'll do is instead of making um, instead of making duplicates of the drawings, uh, which could get inserted somewhere in the middle of the the list. I don't know if you guys fully understand this, but I want to explain it. If there is another Tahoma file where you're rearranging your images and you've got this list of images, if I make a duplicate of this one, I'm pretty sure I've had this happen in OpenTunes, it'll make the duplicate and it'll stick it here in the middle, and then the animation on the earlier shot will be broken. It'll actually be ruined. If I make sure I only add new drawings at the end, then it won't be broken. So what I'll do is I'll take the drawing that looks the most close to what I want, which is actually probably this one. So I'm going to hit Control. I'm going to hit the S key. And I'm going to hit Control A. And I'm going to hit Control C. And I'm going to come back here and actually paste the drawing in. That's the safe way to do this. This one should be looking empty. But now what I'm going to do is modify this drawing so that we can forge ahead and get the, the lip sync done. So I'm going to hit the B key, R key to sample that color, erase his mouth. And now what we're going to do is, gosh, I tell you, I think I'm going to actually, um, again, R key, I'm just going to, whoops, I'm going to just take the brush, I'm using the big brush, I'm just going to get rid of all this. And I think even get rid of this. What I'm going to do to keep it more consistent with the other um, the other pose is I'm going to paste this over here. And let me just zoom out and see if that basically looks right. And it pretty much does. I'm going to just hit shift and make it slightly bigger. And I think that'll do the trick. And now I'm going to do the same thing with the eyebrow, but I'm going to actually reverse it. I'm going to flip it around. So I'm going to go control C, control V, and then just go like that. Rotate it. And move that into place. Now, I'm not totally happy with the positioning, so I'm going to grab it a little closer. Yeah, I still don't like that. Let me hit escape. Escape, I say. Okay. Tahoma, really? Really, dude? That's what you're going to do? Okay. Okay. That's what we're going to do today. Okay. So now I'm going to drag this up about as high as I can get it. And then I'm going to hit the B key, sample the flesh tone, and just fix the problem. Fixy, fixy. Quick and easy. So there's a time to bake body parts into additional drawings. There's, there's a time to break a character up into pieces. It just depends. In this case, I'm pretty much leaving it as complete drawings. So here, this should be uh, I'm going to hit the W key and just toggle forward to the drawing that I just did. And now all these drawings, as far as I'm concerned, for the moment, can just be eliminated. And now at the beginning of this particular shot, and I can go ahead and save all here in half a second, but at the beginning of this shot, there's just... Ah, it looks like I didn't actually have any, um, any uh, plastic tool animation. So, um, hey, Yvette. Um, Munishwar said good evening and then retracted his message. Huh. Wonder why. Why retract your message, Munishwar? We're all just having fun here today. Okay. Um, so now what we need to do is duplicate the um, lip sync concept that we had before. Just like this. And... I would say let's actually hit the D key, then the A, uh, not the A key, the S key, stretch this, and if I hit, let me see if I hit control, well, there we go, if I hit alt, it stretches it in both directions, and I'm actually going to stretch it a little bit wide as well, and then I think that will do the trick, 
Let's see if it changes position. Now, see, that, that looks about right. Okay. So now we're going to go Control-C, looking at the line of dialogue. You could just speak up and, so we'll, we'll do it there. And then we'll find the edit point later. It's not a big deal. You could just speak up and, and then this is a quick edit. We're actually going to, he's already talking when we go to this shot. So that means he's going to stop on this vocalization. And now right, right while I'm thinking about it, we're going to go ahead and fix the color on his mouth. A little bit darker. Okay, good. We don't even need to, well, okay, we probably should pipe this through the plastic tool. Um, Chris K, there's no question, pixel, 100%. Vectors are great. I mean, I've, I've done plenty of shots with the blender grease pencil. Um, I have not had good luck with um, vectors in open tunes very often at all. And frankly, you know, I've, I've used flash. I, I'm not a vector guy. Uh, I get the I get the seductive appeal of being able to scale things, um, but in practice, I actually don't find it that useful most of the time. So that's my opinion. I'm gonna hit the X key now and just see if I can give him a a fun, fun little jerk of the head. Da 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 da. -da. Right? Okay, that works. Now here's what we're gonna do. When Asher interrupts him, control C, I'm going to put a key in there and then I'm going to go, let's turn off, keep distance, I'm going to do a one frame, one frame pop, I turned off keep distance so that I can actually stretch him, okay, and then I'm going to con control C, control V, and probably what I want to do here actually is go back over here and now I'll, I'll delete this one out of here we don't need that but this one let's just duplicate that since we're adding to the end of the list it's not gonna break anything in my earlier scenes okay so why did I do that well I wanna zoom in here and for that one quick frame transition I'm going to actually hit shift and see if I can, yeah. All right, so let's see how this goes. This may not go great, but I'm going to hit alt. Okay, now I'm going to hit control to skew it, moving around a little bit. Um, For a one framer, that's probably actually okay. Let me hit the B key and let's patch this up. B. I'm just using one of the my paint brushes, actually a fairly big brush too, but it's sort of a utilitarian brush. And now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make another duplicate, boom, so that we can see what works because I think it might be better. And I'm going to just sample this color right here, hit the R key, sample that. Well, actually, I guess I need to finish erasing first, so forget that idea. Okay. B key. I'm trying to move fast so I. Whoa, stop. Too light. Okay, and I'm going to grab this color, R key there. B key, go like this. Whoops, that's too thick. Oh, come on. I didn't mean to hit X. B key, Z. So this will all make sense in a minute. But I'm, I'm doing it like this so that I can see the other eyebrow. So I can kind of match the, the volume for the most part. All right. And now I can hit the R key and just erase this eyebrow back out. So I don't even know if I'm going to use these poses. I think I will. I'm going to use one of them. I'm sure of that. But I don't know which one. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten up the outlines on this thing just because it's a little more consistent with 
what we had on the other poses. Maybe, nah, that nah, just makes them look old. So, all right, so I'm going to come back here and say, let's delete that. Oh, uh, sorry. Ah, that's not what I meant to do. Okay, delete. Boom. Now I'm going to grab this. I'm guessing, I'm guessing the following. This, uh, delete. Followed by this, followed by this. I don't know. I'm going to see. Okay. Now here, I'm going to change my mind about this. Um, well, here's what I actually need to do. I'm going to do this kind of the a weird way. Now that won't work. Well, actually, maybe it will. Yep, it did. Okay, stop. Oh, no. Tahoma just bombed. Tahoma just did what Tahoma does, which is... Oh, boy. Yeah. That's a classic Tahoma. Look at that. You can see that this is utterly... Tahoma just lapsed into total corruption. You know, it's now confused about... I mean, here's a an image sequence that has only two images, and it thinks all of a sudden it's... It thinks there's all these other images. That's crazy stuff. Man, it's just like... Really crappy file management under the hood. I delete all except the first two... And now can I actually even look at this one? Yes, I can. So that's good. All right, I'm just going to forge ahead and hope that this... Um, let's try hitting the Z key and see what happens. And, of course, to home it blew up. Okay, well, that's not a horrible thing because it means that the drawing is um, probably not saved incorrectly. But, yeah, yeah, just crap file manage or data management under the hood. Explode, explode, explode. You know, this is this is the spot where you're going to hear me go into a rant sometimes. I'm not going to rant today. But the long story short is that when when soft when you when you go kind of deep on what I'm doing right here and the software blows up, that just tells you that in the entire world there's like four people that are actually going this deep with the software because it it's badly broken badly broken under the hood okay so now what what has happened is everything i did in the last 20 minutes is gone thank you tahoma thank you thank you okay we take a little breather and we just forge ahead trying to keep this as simple as possible let me see what we have here okay this was supposed to be deleted is this even the right shot let me check 396 B and then this is C so this is supposed to be 396 B so what it did was it saved it did save it but it the only thing that got saved was when I first started all my work is gone well, that's that's what Tahoma will do for you. So, make a note. You better be careful. Save your work frequently. Because if you actually go beyond a completely idiotic toy cartoon that, you know... 
your software is going to let you down in a big way. Okay. Yeah, we get it. Okay, so here's what we're going to do, folks. God, that's annoying. That is so annoying. All right. I am going to hit the D key. So I've created a duplicate. We're going to erase the stupid thing, like I said before. And now we're going to save all. And we're going to do what I've always done with Krita, at least in recent months, which is save every single step. Every single step. The only reason I haven't done that, there is an autosave feature, but I've oftentimes found it to be more intrusive than helpful. So that's a whole discussion and argument people could have. My opinion is I'd rather just get in the habit of remembering to save frequently. Okay? So now what I'm going to do is um, actually switch this drawing to the one I just created. Okay, so 43 was the one I used as a model. Actually, it was this one. Is this zero? Okay. I'm going to take all this stuff, delete it, and we're just going to kind of move quickly here. I'm going to go into the drawing, hit the S key, grab everything, control C, go to the blank drawing, click it so it has focus, hit the S key, control V. Now we're going to go in and we're going to do all our fixie poo again. So this is going to be quick. All right. Uh, not necessarily going to do this in the same order as before. Going to grab this. Okay, that was a mistake. I'm, it does happen sometimes that I inadvertently use my Krita hotkeys because I'm rapidly jumping between programs. So there's that. Let's take all of this. We're going to hit the R key, sample that, hit our brush. We don't want that brush. We want this one. Again, sample the color, erase. Well, not erase, really. It's actually paint over. All right, and for this this time, I'll just go ahead and get rid of that. S key, Control-C, Control-V, bring this over here. And I think what I did was I made it slightly bigger, hitting the, the Shift key. Zoom out just to see if things are shaping up properly. And again, save all. Okay. So we're okay. This is really only going to take a couple minutes to recover most of the stuff that mattered. So, R key, click, B key. We'll go ahead and do our erasing. The R key is to sample the RGB color. And now I'm going to sample, actually, I think I'm going to sample the outline color. And I'm actually going to see if I can get away with something like that. Uh, kind of, sort of. I think so. Uh, it often turns out that when you have to redo stuff, it turns out better anyway. So, all right, we're back in good shape in so far as the visual acting goes but of course I had lip sync in there that is completely gone forever because Tahoma never did save it so again save all Munishwar um Why are you using Tahoma 2D if it has this many problems? Well, let me think about how to answer that. Because all software has problems. There's no such thing as software that doesn't blow up and have issues. There is no such thing as reliable software. In the real world, there just isn't. I mean, maybe somebody's going to chime in and say, well, my software of choice is very reliable and never crashes. People say that about Clip Studio Paint, blah, 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 blah. In my experience, in many decades of using all kinds of very capable and complicated software, there is no software that's actually that reliable. However, the best answer to your question is that OpenTunes and Tahoma is extremely forgiving. In other words, when it does get corrupted, and you can tell when it happens, 
normally if you if you reload your project it actually reloads cleanly so the problems that occur tend to be in active memory and they don't actually happen that often but when they do happen they're big okay point being that if you know the software and you save your work frequently normally you're not gonna have a problem even if you have the crash or the weird corruption thing you're gonna be able to bounce back from it very easily and quickly so think about doing characters interviews since I'm not ready for a full animated series, I'm thinking about doing character interviews. Um, I have no idea. So I assume you're talking about you're going to cast the characters that are in your books. Or actually, you're going to probably animate them. So you're talking about doing an animation of a character from your book being interviewed so the audience is now getting to know the characters in the book i think that's what you're asking and i would say yeah why not go ahead do it rock and roll my girl rock and roll um that would be a interesting way to maybe try to acquaint the public with your characters that type of thing no problem okay so there's the shot i just created and frankly i think the i think what i did animation wise was probably a bit obnoxious but i don't know we'll see let's keep going let's not stop okay one thing we want to do though on this drawing is uh get rid of the lip the mouth okay groovy cool and then b key boom all right, Tahoma, you're going to save this. I believe something like that is what I was doing, although I have to say, unfortunately, I'm not as happy with that one as I was with the first one. That's more like it. That's more like it. Let's take this and just hit the D key so we can select this. And I believe it was Alt. And I don't remember how many we had. Um, the line of dialogue was, you could just speak up and I think that was where we cut it. And remember, we can always chop a little bit out of the beginning of the shot. Okay, and we're going to go B key. Okay, I want to think about this one for a second. I want to try a different approach, I think. Okay, first, before we get too far, let's... Uh, go ahead and mod the color here. And this particular mouth shape for me had a bit of a problem. There's a little bit of a strange little divot in the top lip that's bugging me. Okay. And that should do the trick. Okay. So now the question really becomes, do we want the extra pose in there? I think since we're tagging it on to the end and we are saving our work frequently, I'm going to go for it, baby. So I'm going to hit the D key to make a duplicate of that. And then we have to actually go to the drawing, not the... Okay, let me think about this for a minute. 
I think I'm going for deadpan now. I think I'm going to go for deadpan. Because he gets interrupted really abruptly by Asher. So what do I mean by deadpan? I mean I'm going to go... R key B. I'm going to actually rotate the screen around like this. Zip in here. Oh, this is what I would probably call Doonesbury eyes. Anybody watch or look red? <laughs> the old comic strip Doonesbury would be kind of sort of know what I'm talking about. Alright, and then R key here. And I think I'm going to leave that one and just see how this goes. Let's just go like that and then chisel back out of it with the flesh color. Let me see. Okay, so the key thing here is that Asher interrupts him. Blah, 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 you can just say, all right. That will probably work. I think that will work. So now, question. Let's look at our schematic. Okay, I'm sorry. The more you draw, the more characters, the better. Absolutely. This is true. This is true. So I'm going to pipe the that through there. And I believe what I did before was something of this nature. X key. And oops, that's not what I want. I want animate. And of course I animated a little bump when he gets interrupted, but I don't honestly think that's probably necessary. I'm going to render this and cut it into the show, in fact, and figure out my edit point. So this is going to be 48 frames. Did I already cut in the other one? I think I did. Yeah, so what we got to do is figure out how these two shots are going to edit together to match the timing of the lip sync. All right, so let's go Control-R and render this. No, there must be some builders here somewhere. 396. And we see no 396B. So let's take half a second and just do it. So we're going to go to the Scenes folder. And we're going to hit F8, which creates a new folder. And this is going to be 396-B. And while I'm here, I'm actually going to create 396C as well. I, I keep all of my shots in separate folders. It's just what I do. Okay, so thinking for a second, and then again, it is my normal practice to, oops, that's not what I want. I want F8. I keep the rendered content in a folder called render, and in this case, I can go Control C, Control-V, just make a copy of the empty folder so they both have a render folder. And again, I think we're ready now to render this into there. And this is going to be 396-B. And I'm going to let it save it as TIFFs. I've sort of given up on insisting on pings out of Tahoma. So now we'll bring this in and then look at how it's cutting between the wide shot and the close-up. And then, and the, and the reason this shot is difficult is because the question is, when Asher interrupts Mel, do we need to see Asher? And the more I'm thinking about it, I'm thinking we don't. All we need to do is hear him say, Mel! And then we cut to Asher, and he says, this is important. Okay? I could be wrong, but I think I'm right. I could be wrong, but I think I'm right. I don't know. I'll find out here in due course, won't I? Yes, I will. Yes, I will. Come on, baby.
boom, 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 and boom. Okay, so now I'm going to look at the dialog up. I'm going to put this on the other screen so I can just kind of time it out. All right. I know. When they ask if anyone objects, speak now or forever, hold your peace, you could... I know. When they ask him... I'm going to go right about... Melchizedek. Actually, I think he should say his full name. Yes. Yep, that's what we'll do. And then we'll cut to uh, Asher. Uh, and I think, therefore, since we've got this shot in there to sort of give the audience <clears throat> a little bit of a breather on the close-ups, I think we should probably should just go back to the close-up here. Let's see. Oops, I'm sorry. W let's see what's in the storyboard. Oh, yeah, he says sorry. So, okay, so that means we're going to save this. Actually, we're going to add to it. We're going to jump one step ahead. I'm going to jump to 397, so I'm going to save this right now. File, save. I just saved all, so let's save it as 397. This may not make perfect sense to you people. You may find this confusing. I don't know. But this is his final landing position, so what we're going to do is we're going to reverse these keys. That's the first thing we're going to do. So that he ends where he started before. And then this key, well, actually, what we need to do is take this, Control-C, Control-V. All right. Now, let's look at this. Okay. We're, we're only adding to the end. And so this is going to be actually... I wonder what happens if we actually lay this on top like that. We can't really do that. So I'm just going to delete this. So I can drag this one in, and then it'll ripple edit the rest. These uh, lip syncs need to be deleted. Control X. And I'm going to save all. It's OK to save all because I haven't actually made any changes to these levels. I'm just moving around the animation keys, and the animation keys are indigenous to the Tahoma file, not the levels. I know it's very, very confusing. It's very confusing indeed. And I apologize for that, but we'll do our very best to make things shape up in a jiffy. Yeah, jiffy, I say. Okay. Yeah, that's the right idea. So he's going to be like, He's going to relax fully. You guys are out there going, dude, man, calm down, man. Calm down. Sorry. Okay, time to go. I enjoyed the stream. We'll definitely be coming in the future. Thanks, Moonshoir. I appreciate that, my friend. I appreciate that. I'm having way too much fun. Okay. And here's what we're going to do. Watch this. This is going to work. I know what to do. We're doing a Charlie Brown. What's a Charlie Brown? We're going to do it all with his mouth. Well, we're going to do it mostly with his mouth. But before I can do that, I need to fix this. So I'm going to just one, two, three... Four. I don't want to have him 
smile per se that to me is on the nose too much it's on the nose acting to have somebody laugh or giggle when they um when they have ostensibly um broken protocol let's say so i want to make this very much about the body language in his mouth so you'll see in a half second what I mean by, what I mean by a Charlie Brown but it's basically the wiggle mouth the wiggle mouth shape that says embarrassment in uh, Charlie Brown comics which would be just take this out actually I cannot draw in here so what I need to do is go in here and let's make a duplicate of this jump to here and then I think this is very obviously risky because the drawing isn't in there okay right so but I think if I go let me look at his positioning here I gotta zoom out unfortunately okay so I'm gonna say it's gonna be about three-fifths on the left and two-fifths on the right So again, this might not work. I don't know if it's going to work. But we're going to try. We're going to try doing a Charlie Brown. Okay? So this would be... <laughs> not, not perfect. Not perfect, but not bad, actually. Not perfect, but not bad. It is definitely the attitude I was looking for. I just wasn't sure if <laughs> you know I'm having to draw it without seeing it. And the reason, by the way, is because yeah, because everything's going through the the plastic tool. Yeah, that actually is what I was after. It's just not quite right. All right, so I'd say we should probably shrink this down a little bit. Let's just go like this. And I guess what I'll do is I think if I hit. Alt shift maybe yeah just just bring it a little under control there folks okay so sheepish 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 is the the attitude that we're after here so Asher just said his line and corrected Mel and I would say we're gonna take this whole line right here and hit control X and move it up Let's see how that plays. Okay, everything's happening way too slow, so I'm going to go right here and j just hit all up arrow and move move all this up. Once we go to this, it needs to, you know, we don't want to dink around. I'm going to actually take two keys out there and see how that feels. Sorry. So he says, sorry. Okay, so here, um, let's just take these out. Okay, so if you want to solve the problem that I'm having right now of not being able to draw in the, the drawing area, what you've got to do is go back into your schematic and take these layers out of the plastic tool temporarily. Just take them out, and now I can go ahead and draw uh, on the screen, and then we will be able to... Um, just pipe them back into the... plastic tool shortly and I would say that's really my second phoneme if the truth be known so I'm gonna grab that come on grab those two drag them down and then here I'm gonna go let's see how that feels Okay, this is actually not bad, but it's just not quite right. I'm going to stretch. Okay, really? Really, Tahoma? That's what you're going to do? Thank you. That's more what I was looking for. And here, it's always a 
bit of a temptation to make his mouth too high and frankly that makes him look too young so um and since we're here and we can do it why don't we fix this a bit too this is not bad though it's definitely pretty close I'm just gonna shrink it again a little bit and just kind of move it into position sorry okay and then here we'll just go Okay, so what I what I was saying would be on the nose is if you had him go, if you had him go, he says, "Sorry," <laughs> like <laughs> I'm embarrassed. <laughs> to me, that's on the nose. That's you see that in, um, gosh, I'm trying to think of where I've seen that recently. It was some pretty major animated movie where you just go like that. You didn't need that in there, you know. It's like you're telling the audience how the character feels and it's like obvious how the character feels if you if you tell the audience how the character feels if you in other words if you tell the audience what they should feel you are insulting your audience so now it might be a fine animation exercise to see if you can capture that sheepish attitude uh, but given a choice I'm gonna always want to play it understated I'm not gonna do what I call on the nose and I don't do it with dialogue either you don't because real people don't say what they really mean most of the time. They literally try to avoid saying what they really mean. You know, for a host of reasons. And if you write your characters that way, they say things indirectly. And you don't wind up with what, what we would call on-the-nose dialogue. Which is very boring. You know, extremely boring for the audience. So again, what I, my point here is that I would not want to, um, I'm going to just check here. And I guess I need to be actually in the plastic tool, and I want to not show the mesh. Thank you, Darren, for that tip the other day. So, sorry. See, that's all he needs to say. C can you imagine? I mean, just, just, just look at that. If he said sorry, sorry, and then went, <laughs> it would just be yeah all Pixar yeah, you're right you're right it's on the nose it's on the nose sheepish is fine but telling the audience how to feel about the fact that he's sheepish by having him act it out for them is an insult that's the way I feel about it and I'm uh, I mean I, I again I'm, I'm a little arrogant here I suppose Speaking from experience, but if there's one thing that I do not get cracked on too much at all in in my very modestly budget films, it's for having stupid on the nose dialogue where the where you know because what happens is you sit there through the whole movie thinking feeling like I knew that was going to happen i knew I knew what was coming you know there's no surprises um I don't tend to have that problem I think that's why my latest movie's been pretty well reviewed actually pretty consistently well reviewed everybody looks at it and they know it's a pretty modestly budgeted film but you don't have a lot of the problems with the type of thing I'm talking about that you typically do have in low budget films because low budget films typically are made by inexperienced filmmakers and they make common mistakes they just do okay so let's get this in here this is 397 so file Save all. I'm going to jump back to... By the way, I want to remind... I, I want to let the people who are here know, since I've been streaming for about two hours, is the first, I don't know, probably 20 minutes of the stream today, I was talking about um, music, composition, sounds, how you can do a, a musical score for a very low cost, you know, really high quality software for not only your workstation but also for your sounds that I that I showed where you can get those and kind of some of the I gave some examples you know played some music and whatnot and so if you're kind of into that side of the production story of animation you can go back and look at the beginning of today's stream and you'll probably find it somewhat interesting I would suspect okay so this is gonna be 397 so I'm gonna go here to the scenes folder I'm gonna hit F8 Okay, that wasn't supposed to happen. F8. And I'm going to create the 397 folder. Boom. And now I'm going to go into the 397 folder. 
and create the render folder. So I'm basically doing Tahoma's job for it right now. Instead of having Tahoma create, instead of using Tahoma's file browser, I'm just kind of doing it this way. So again, uh, I, it's just more reliable. You know, it's it's faster and it's more reliable. So it may have worked once or twice, Pixar, but you've done it one too many times. Well, that that's right. And by the way, that that's why for me, I hate to say this, but for me, CGI animated movies pretty much ended around. Oh gosh. 2015. I would say. Now when did when did King Kong come out as far as regular CGI movies? Was King Kong 2005? Oh. Wow, I'm really having a brain fart here. Yeah, 2005. So for me, CGI movies pretty much ended in 2005. I would even say basically for me, for the most part, there hasn't been very much at all that's come along that's fresh or interesting since 2005. Isn't that crazy? Crazy! All the superhero movies, I could take them or leave them, frankly. Mostly leave them. I thought Guardians of the Galaxy was fun because of the comedy. Uh, so we're going to 397 render. And we're going to call this, uh, well, 397. Bam. Okay, we'll let that render. We'll get it cut into the sh But when you see the same little acting motifs repeating themselves too much, it, it gets old. Now, I, I say that as somebody who definitely has... Well, y you noticed some time ago uh, that... You had noticed in the show, Darren, let's go back to Vegas, that here this transition was somewhat um, purloined, let's say, from Aladdin. Okay, so the scene in Aladdin where... Aladdin and Jasmine are both talking, and then they both end on the word trapped. Okay? Well, this, this transition is stylistically similar. It feels the same. She says, you know, you get to be free. You get to do this. You get to do that. And then it dissolves to Mel saying the same basic type of dialogue. And th so this becomes a transitional device. So that was kind of purloined from Aladdin. I didn't mean to. I just... When I look back, it's like, yeah, that's kind of the same feeling. And I have to confess, there's actually another one that was kind of purloined from Aladdin, which is back here, when when they see the monkey, uh, Mel says, how do you know him? And TNR says, well, how do you know him? And, and then I noticed when I watched Aladdin the other day, yeah, I'm just trapped. When I watched Aladdin the other day, it's that shot where they both go, they're after me wait, they're after you, right? That's kind of the same thing as, how do you know, honey? You know, it's, it's, it's not the same. It's certainly not a copyright violation or anything like that, but it's definitely the same vibe. And I didn't even realize I did it, you know? Some of this stuff sticks in your head, I suppose, and finds its way into your work, but that happens to everybody. You know, that's pretty much normal. Okay, so this is, um, we're jumping to 397. So let's get this in here. <laughs> This stuff is all somewhat comical. So here, you know, I'm talking about not re reusing these motifs a million times and that, yeah, I can find examples in my own work. But I think if, if it's a little bit different and it's entertaining and it works, if it works, it works. You know what I mean? So here's hoping. <laughs> all right, let's put this in here. Let's modify that. Oh, sorry. Boom. Done. Okay, good. pop right there so there's our edit point we don't want to we don't want to stretch it out too much I'm just trapped okay um this is three 
three, six, ten, not quite twelve, thirteen, fourteen, nineteen, twenty four, twenty eight, and change. So yeah, we're we're almost um we're almost at the thirty second point today. So that's humming right along. Okay, well actually that's yesterday, so Mel, Melchizedek, this is important. Sorry. Okay, it's working. It's working. Uh, I want to change this so that he does not say Mel. He says Melchizedek. He does not often call him by his full name. And so when he does, obviously... That's a little more intense situation. Boom, boom. Okay. We'll save that little, uh... Okay, we still got quite a bit to go here. Because he's got to pull out the old papyrus and get a message to somebody. So, the question now becomes, as we look at the flow here, do we want to cut to wide again. I don't think so. In fact, if anything, we should even tighten in. Maybe use this shot. Mm. I feel like I want to go Disney on this one. <clears throat> what do I mean by that? Well, I think I want to kind of start from scratch and do an extra shot for this. So I'm just going to save this and just start from start clean. All right. 8 frames a second. However, let's block this in. So this is going to be shot number It's 396. B. Ah, yes. That's right. I saved this already. It's 396. C. Did I? Or was that before the crash? Let's find out. <laughs> Whoops. Dot TNZ. Not found. Yep, that's what I thought. Okay. So we're going to start from scratch. That's fine. File, new scene. I just want to clear the desk. It's every buffoon character in Pixar films and others. Yeah, there's just too many... Um, there's too many motifs that are copied verbatim. I couldn't agree more. So we're going to save this right away, actually. And we'll call it 396C. And I'm just going to save it as a Krita doc. Ah, uh, wait a second. Okay, this is getting confusing. Yeah, okay, that's right. I created the... Mm. Okay. Let's try that again. 396-C. Save that. 
and I want to look back here in this in the storyboard and see what that is because I'm being a little bit creative with my um, storytelling at this point I'm a little bit confused on my which items I am overwriting okay it looks like that's not even in the storyboard so we might as well just save over it and call it good okay tab all right Okay. Let's put in a key. All I'm going to do is I'm just going to stay on this layer. And I'm not going to even think about timing. I'm just going to get the the poses in there. And we're going to do it this way. I'm going to go ahead and put in a bunch of keys so that I can bop out here into full screen mode and just focus completely on... I'm, I'm a Disney animator now sitting at my light table. That's what I'm doing. I'll just hit save every once in a while. I probably, just to be safe, however, before I go too much further, I should put in another layer so that when I save, it gets saved as a Krita file. Otherwise, I will lose my animation data. Okay, back to full screen. Yeah, I know I'm making faces. This is not feeling right, this particular, uh, hello, this particular pose. Let's get this. This is wrong.
Okay, and probably this might be a good example of where onion skins might help a bit. We'll see. Probably not going to be able to see him. Ah, it's probably okay. Yeah, I don't like that. That's not helping. What, I don't, what I'm trying to avoid is character drift, if you will. Where you slowly go off character as you progress. I've had it happen a million times. Actually, I think this back here. This is basically an experiment. <clears throat> In fact, if we're really going to do the crazy thing, let's have his hat pop off his head. So obviously you could just copy this key. But I don't want to. This is very much a an exercise. Weep. Okay, so he's got this yellow collar.
Okay, let's do a quick uh, sanity check. I think maybe push the eyes up a little higher. Now, to have that squeeze right there, not too shabby. I'm going to hit shift. The point is that obviously that's a crazy exaggerated. Squash and stretch moment, if you will. B key. Mm-hmm. And frankly, you're probably going to have some tweens, but... As far as the landing position of this pose, his shoulders need to be... So he's saying, a key's a deck. Uh, I think I'll go ahead and add one more. Actually. Keys down. Okay, let's put it to land out of that pose. So let's go boom. Okay. So you're going to wind up here. I know, I'm making faces.
Yeah, we often have this tug of war with Asher. Or I have this tendency to give him a chin half the time and half the time not. Or not a chin, I should say a jawline. <laughs> okay, so the problem there, and we need to be ruthless. We need to absolutely just kill it. If something's not working, just destroy it. Because otherwise you spend all day trying to fix something that never really should have been fixed. And that isn't quite what I'm wanting. That's probably better. So this is obviously quite exaggerated. So, frankly, what I'm doing here doesn't... probably is not going to work very well for this show, in truth. This style of doing this sort of keyframing because I'm not going to be doing a bunch of tweens with a bunch of intermediate drawings. And so getting the character from the one pose to the other becomes a problem unless he's going to snap from one pose to the other, which is harder to pull off convincingly at eight frames a second, basically in an anime style, if you will. So this is a bit of an experiment, but I was kind of getting sick of what I was doing. Okay, so this would be quite a bit later. Okay, the deck. And then he kind of his body weight kind of falls. Hey, Ashnan. And then he would say, this is important. This is important right there. He would essentially, this is where we could maybe start to fix things up a little bit by just moving things around. When he says important, he could lean into it this way. Let's just scroll through here. Okay, so we'll come back here, and let's just start seeing if it's possible to to uh, sew these together. That mold shape. Okay. Okay, basically his body position doesn't change much there. So therefore right there. Bad, 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 sucks, 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 uh, sucks. Slightly too high here. Yeah. 
That transition is actually not too bad, although I question whether his... Um, hello? Whether it was chin line... Ch Come on, you're supposed to be in erase mode. Critter. And now you're supposed to not be in erase mode. So that basically meets his ear. Yeah. There we go. He's a dick. So he says, He's a dick. And then this transition is obviously way, way, way too fast. Well, this is what you'll find is when you start doing full animation, you're going to find you always make everything happen a billion times faster than it should. See, it's still too fast. It's still too fast. If he was going to actually shout out, Now, oh, keys a deck! <sighs> it's still too fast. You see that? <sighs> okay, so you could ostensibly take this and go... <sighs> okay, so right here, you're going to grab all of this and just shrink, sh sneak it back up a little bit and then let it come back down and then probably something like that <sighs> okay and then if you're gonna go the up here probably you're gonna do a down a contrary motion probably Okay, and then you kind of want in some sort of tween to get to here, right? So now we'll do this in the most simple way possible. I'll turn, well, the onion skins are on, so don't see them very well. So here I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a liquefy to just make this just a, a straight ahead, get me to, to this, and then obviously that's a big change in attitude. It kind of works, but the only thing that breaks it, I would say, it looks to me like is his nose. So let's fix his nose. Slight turn and slight up, I believe. That's better. It's still a bit on the thin side, perhaps. Come on, Credo. Fill the stupid cash, you bonehead. Your burn head. All right. Okay. Let's tween it. Let's do it right. Yeah, see, that works. Now here, what we could do, again, is we'll do a slow in so that we tease the audience that this is about to happen. So we just, ah, just a little bit. And then there's the new pose. And then he says his line of dialogue. So this is actually working. It's working almost kind of shockingly well. Okay, I'm going to look at Blifton's comment. Hey, Ineosa, I think the fact that he's talking will kind of make smooth the transition if that makes sense to a degree yes that is true you almost have to ignore the the mouth so it's going to come in really on the um because if you look at the story here blah 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 mel mel keys a deck so it's pretty much on keys or keys a deck he's a deck okay so now we have the same situation here. This can all happen pretty quickly. Boom. So how do you get from this to this? You know, that's a pretty intense look to a pretty relaxed look. So the only way I can figure is we got to look at every little piece and see what's not working, what's breaking it.
Okay. Mm, I will say that maybe on this one that might be an, an improvement. Okay. Now we got to look in here on his eyes. Okay. This should be a transitional shake, but I'm just going to erase it so I don't so I'm not fighting myself here. If you So this is going to be kind of soft eyes. And I'm trying to be what I'm doing right now is I'm trying to be very vigilant to when I'm s when I'm feeling it go off the rails because it's going to go off the rails. It's just a question of when and whether I'll catch it when it happens. Okay, that feels like it kind of worked. Okay, so now we've got the the eyelid kind of the baggy eyelid thing happening in the in the extreme. Not too bad actually. Probably square that off a bit more. Okay, now there's a big stretch here. And probably the big flaw is that this, or at least one of them, is that that is too delineated, let's say. Soften up, soften up. Okay, so how do you stretch out that much and not have the beard, the chin come down? Well, and, and by the way, this is what makes this a real um, violation, actually, of the style of the show because I, I never do. We're having nothing but fun. I'm going to actually put another tween in there to really smooth out that motion. So, and now I'm doing the, okay, so now that's interesting. The reality is that this eyebrow almost doesn't change position really hardly at all. So, that's fine. So we got pretty squinted, still squinted, but we've got, yeah, we're coming up to this position. So we're going to just split the difference there. What's going on with his nose? It's elongating. Okay, tip of his nose really hasn't changed position for the most part nostril has not changed position what has changed is this outside contour here yep so we're doing a straight tween so we're going to just split the difference splitting the difference here doing this as simply as possible okay we got this contour that comes to here top So I very rarely do this type of tweening. Pretty confident that I can do it. Okay, got this lower lip that closes. So essentially we're just getting it closed. That's really all we're doing there.
Will people look at the mouth or the eyes? I think typically, I, it would be my opinion that people are probably more fixated on eyes, generally. I think that would be more normal. Okay. There's an angle. That, again, doesn't really change too much. So this is really quintessential tween work. I mean, this is as garden variety tweening as it gets. And as you can see, you can see why I don't do it. It's slow. The question you'd be asking yourself, the only reason I'm doing it is because it's a fun exercise. I'm enjoying doing it. I've been doing the fairly rapid fire mechanical, very creative, but mechanical uh, economical approach all morning and I'm just kind of ready for something different, right? Is looks really similar to what I've seen other people do when they're doing tweening. You wind up with, in other words, the quality of this, these lines right here looks really familiar to me. <laughs> okay. If you know what I mean. In other words, that's the quality of line that, like, traditional animated movies like your Disney's and this stuff. That's kind of about what the quality of the line winds up being, it seems like. Okay, so this, here we've got this contour of his lower lip. So here we've got a scoop that turns into an S. So the reality is that there is probably going to be a line like that. This doesn't really move too much so I'm just gonna kind of allow that to be messy we'll stretch that out there okay we'll call that a curve that really doesn't change position to speak of okay this line goes from here to there so I'm gonna split the difference boom that's what I'm gonna do and now I don't want to let his the direction of his vision change really so this actually should be tweaked okay that's better yeah see there it looks like he's maintaining his gaze or, you know his target if you will Now that line I never drew, so we'll just go like this and then figure out how to get from one to the other. Okay, so up, down, up. Down. And I'm gonna zip in here. Okay, let's have a look. Let's keep the deck. <sighs> okay, again, the timing of it is is horrible. But I, I think if you're going to approach it this way, what what I'm running into in terms of the challenge of making it smooth is what you're going to do is you're going to wind up running into this all the time. This is where all your time is going to go is actually saying, oh, okay, well, here we've got two poses that now we get we really need to get from one to the other because that's not particularly smooth. And if he's going to have this breath in here, So here's what I'm going to do, actually. I'm going to take this, make that a tween to that, and see how that feels. Jeez, a deck. Oh. Style lip sync. This is a really good exercise. It's fun to do. But what will ultimately happen is I'm going to wind up with probably literally one pose. Maybe two. Might be this one and this one. Those two drawings, quite literally, this entire shot could be done from those two drawings. And this is why I don't do a ton, struck the entire animation. Even this shot right here, this is a great pose of Asher. This is a great pose of Asher. Obviously, it's just tween, so that's all just either plastic tool 
or you know map it to a plane in blender and, and deform it yeah you could go in and do ink and paint on all those but um, but why you know if this is the best characterization if this is the best representation of the character and I think it probably is and this is just a little bit of a stretch version but they both look pretty good then why not use that as the basis to come back and 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 knock out that lip sync the the big problem here is actually this and I find that very interesting because that happens to me oftentimes the initial drawing is usually good the tweening is usually pretty good, but there's something about that second or third drawing like that that tends to take the character off the rails. And I don't really know why. I don't know if it's something other animators bump into, but I certainly do. Um, the way they have no idea why that happens, but it, it pretty much happens all the time. So for me, my general policy is, just because I am always worried about how long things are taking, is if I get the drawing correct like this, and I'm going to color that sucker in, and I'm going to build off of that to create these other poses. And it tends to come out looking pretty good. So, anyway, I think with that, I'm going to go ahead and sign off. It's been quite a uh, quite a productive uh, session this morning. But I'm ready for a break and maybe some lunch. So, with that, I am going to say, yeah, we've got a 30-second delay in the stream, too. So, with that, I will say adios. And I'm going to go ahead and stop the stream and then wait 30 seconds to actually kill it on the YouTube end so that you guys get the last 30 seconds of me saying, hey.